I'm trying, Alphas. I really am. I've stared at my screen for long periods of time. I've walked away, gave it time, came back with fresh eyes, and I'm still bothered by the asymmetry. In fact, everything about it makes it harder for the designers, the ship manufacturer, and even the pilot. I'm on a soapbox. Hear my rant. So hold position. On Reverse the Verse, CIG said that the asymmetry on the Drake Corsair won't affect its flight and atmosphere much. Yes, it will have some impacts, but no, it shouldn't be to the point where if you look at it, you think you're going to be flying around in a like a left or right hand circle <laughs> in atmosphere. Exploration ships, one would think, are made to be good at scanning, traveling long distances, descending into atmosphere, and landing planet side. The four forces that act on an aircraft are weight, thrust, lift, and drag. The wings, it's, it's purely going to be affecting the drag simulation. If you added weight, like, I don't know, adding an extra wing to one side, you'd increase the overall weight of the ship, causing the thrusters on that side to work harder to keep up, or you'd have to make them larger to create equal thrust to weight ratio on each side. So my vote is Drake would just add bigger propulsion systems. More weight, more propulsion to keep the same acceleration and thrust as before, adding a polydactyl wing. Why would any manufacturer create an additional piece, large piece, mind you, requiring a lot of raw materials, which increase mass, cause the ship to fly not as optimally as possible in atmosphere? Essential to the performance of the aircraft are the thrust-to-weight ratio and wing loading. Thrust-to-weight ratio is the ratio of thrust in newtons, to the weight of a particular rocket, a jet engine, or even a propeller engine. It indicates the performance of the vehicle or engine. For example, combat jets with high thrust-to-weight ratio means they have high maneuverability and a high rate of climb. I would imagine that a spaceship that's designed to descend planetside and then load up with cargo and leave atmosphere would need a thrust-to-weight ratio of over one. Nevertheless, more weight means more thrust is needed to take off Vehicles are compared to competing vehicles in the same class. Studies are done. Results are published comparing them. Any stats lost, like thrust-to-weight ratio or even stifling the feel of handling an atmosphere, would mean Drake's competition gains favor in the eyes of rankings and comparisons. Why would they add superfluous design time to solve issues that could be easily avoided? Why would any manufacturing company sacrifice economies of scale in production and add unnecessary parts like those wing segments, connectors, rivets, etc.? Because they're not the same size wings, left and right. Yeah, why would they add that cost to the cost of goods sold? Surely Drake's business model is built on achieving a certain acceptable margin percent. Therefore, if Drake is indeed competing on price, as the Star Citizen lore implies, they would not raise their cost without gaining a market advantage from it the MSRP will raise accordingly. Because you know it ain't coming out of Drake's margins. <laughs> the advent of the two small wings on one side, in lieu of traditional symmetrical design, only costs Drake's sales. Their price point increases, without any gains to margins, nor market share. This serves no purpose and yields no advantage. Drake is a no-frills manufacturer. They don't even cover live cables or stock their ships with med kits. They won't even spring for wall plates to hide sensitive parts of the ship. So do you really think that they will risk brand equity and would add all that extra design time, testing time, cost to raw materials, cost of additional storage space for those materials, cost of creating separate assembly lines for the different side, just so that you could look cool and unique from afar? I rest my case. No, I don't. I continue. The more I think about it, and the more I talk it through, the more frustrated I become. No company would intentionally add that much additional manufacturing cost while sacrificing their ability to streamline their supply chain by being able to order fewer parts in economic order quantities. Symmetrical design lends to better buying power, as one can order more of the same item at once, thereby lowering the cost per unit. Drake's been around long enough to know this. If you were going to design something, would you intentionally make it harder on yourself and your team? Tell the crew in engineering they're going to have to deal with it. We want something with a unique profile. This ship is asymmetrical for the sake of being asymmetrical. If CR feels we need more asymmetrical ships in the verse, 
it should be for ships that realistically could be so. In my unprofessional opinion, ships marketed to be flown in atmosphere like explorer vessels should be optimized to react well in conditions with lift and drag. You think that would be top of mind at CIG considering all the work on the new flight model, huh? Let's look at the positives of their asymmetrical design before I rant any further. It looks awesome folded up. It has an easily identifiable silhouette. And in art, odd numbers are more interesting than even numbers. Same in old sci-fi too, it seems. <sighs> Fine, full transparency. I bought one. Yeah, I know, after all that, and I still added one to my fleet. Well, just in case it's really badass or they fix this asymmetry. I melted my Valkyrie for this concept, gray box Corsair, and a Freelancer Max. Likely, this ship will be part of my ever-growing list of buyback pledges, though the loaner ships for the Corsair are actually great. You get a Constellation Aquila and a Buccaneer. But I'm still not happy with the purchase, even with store credit. And if I feel this strongly when this Drake Corsair is released, and my eyes still hurt, then I may just have to change careers and alignment and focus solely on ridding the verse of these infernal eyesores that scream lazy writing. They've jumped the shark on this one. I'm sorry, Jim Martin. I know you worked on a ton of great films and Star Trek episodes. I respect your work. I'm sorry, Paul, from the concept ship department. I can see you were real happy to announce this one, man. You had me on all of it except this one thing. If there were two wings on both sides for a reason, or just one on each side, it would make sense from a business perspective from a flight perspective, and even from a game design perspective. I really feel for John Crew and his team. Getting this to fly right must surely add at least some amount of unnecessary labor hours to their work. You want to give us asymmetrical designs? Cool. Think like a real manufacturer. Think like a real engineer. Your goal is to be more efficient and profitable with each design. Save the lopsided artsy ships for zero G, and be sure it's asymmetrical for a reason. Like the Caterpillar, for example, to provide command oversight to loading and unloading of cargo. When the unique selling proposition of your game is attention to realism, creative choices like this can really break the immersion and make it difficult to suspend our disbelief. So I understand this is a video game, yet my point is that this creative choice is not in line with the game's direction. I'm chalking it up to lazy writing because they skipped the why behind this design and didn't consider the audience they're building. Gamers attracted to a higher level of realism than others. So what are your thoughts? I've stirred the pot. You've had a whiff. How do these wings smell? Are you kind of wishing that you had never heard that Chris Roberts ordered this forced asymmetry? And you wish that that pointy thing on the tip of the big wing did something to justify the design? Give us a taste of what your mind is cooking up in the comments below. If some of these points raised your eyebrow and made you reconsider the Corsair's design, Create some asymmetry below by adding weight to the like button. I'd love to hear more on the pros of this design and see a gentleman's debate form in the comments below. See what your org mates think by sharing this video with them and grow the controversial discussion right here. Remember to check back and see what others think as comments are added. Ding that bell to get notified of new content. And hey, 3.5 is dropping real soon, so I'll be looking for you on ArtCore.